Good morning and happy Sabbath. These students that are up here are the ones that help every Friday with our song service at chapel when we have chapel together every week. And so we invite you to sing along with us. Um, unfortunately, we went to a different room to practice the song, and I think our music might have gotten left in there. Mr. Bryant, would it be all right if we did the other one first? Could I impose upon you to do in Christ alone first? Thank you so much. Um, Let's begin.
the last song that we'd like to sing together with you is Who Am I? It's a good thing I have students to remind me to put my capo on, otherwise it wouldn't be so good. time for the children's story 
Emma, who is a sophomore, is going to be giving that this morning. And so I invite the kids to go back and get their baskets and be ready to collect the money as they come on forward here for the children's story. The money from that they collect as it comes up goes to help Parkview and students who need some help with their tuition to be able to come to our school. Good morning, everyone. Oh. <laughs> okay, so for this chosen story, I'm going to need a volunteer. <laughs> How about you? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this plate down, and you're going to squirt this ketchup onto this plate. Okay, that's good. Okay, now I want you to put that ketchup back in the bottle. I knew it. So, that kind of seems hard, doesn't it? Well, that's because it's impossible to take things back. So you can go sit back down now. Thank you. So our words are a lot like this ketchup on this plate. Once we say them, we can't take them back. And that's the really sad thing, but we always have to remember to watch what we say and ask God to help us out when we have something to say so that we say the right thing. So thank you all for coming for this children's story. That's it. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you've given us. Please help us watch what we say. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning and happy Sabbath. Uh, we are going to invite you to sing the doxology with us. Our band is going to play. This is their first time ever playing this and playing with people singing with them. So we're asking that you keep up with us because we can't keep up with you. <laughs> okay, let's stand please. go ahead and be seated. I just want to say good morning to God's people. And thank you for allowing Parkview Adventist Academy to be a part of your worship this morning. As you see, we have beautiful children. And God has blessed these beautiful children in many different ways. And I'm so excited because the whole school is here this morning, not just part of us, but the whole school. So thank you so very, very much. At Parkview, we um, have an intentional theme or mission that we're trying to <clears throat> talk about and go with. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are working with hearts. That is our main goal at Parkview Adventist Academy. Heart work. And when we have issues or problems, we always take it to the heart with the kids, with um, the group, the staff, our board, etc. because God is the only one that can do anything about most everything that we experience. The heart of the child, the heart of the parent, the heart of the teacher, the heart of our school board, the heart of our churches that support us. It's all heart work. But we have created a new mission uh, statement and it is educating to empower students for tomorrow by inspiring them to serve like Jesus today. God promises to make us the head and not the tail as we worship him. Do you realize that Parkview Adventist Academy 120 years ago was the first private school in the state of Oklahoma. Our superintendent was at a meeting with the Oklahoma Private Schools Association this past fall, and the director went up to him and said, do you know that you guys are the first ones to have a private school in the state of Oklahoma? And so we began to research. It hasn't always been Parkview, as many of you know that, because you are probably in the process of helping that change. But it has it started 120 years ago, which means we are going to celebrate our homecoming, 120-year homecoming in September. We hope and pray that all of you will attend. Contact your friends, your family members who have had anything to do with Parkview. We're going to have all kinds of flyers and slides and everything at this point from this point on to begin telling everybody. Our website is going to be open for those who want to tell stories that they had experienced at Parkview. Um, just a lot of fun things. Um, at another time, uh, Sarah Shepard and Amy Lou Tzika, who are your church people here at Edmond, will be sharing with you some of the activities they are our marketing um, directors at Parkview, and they will be making a, people aware of the activities for that weekend. So we just want to thank you. This last year, um, we had a great year at Parkview. We had um, mission as our 
one of our key aims. We went to the San Antonio Vision Clinic down there and served over how many thousands, Dr. Schellenberg? How many? 1,300? 1,400? We served at um, three days. And so we had a wonderful, blessed time doing that. And then we had a mission trip that we just returned from, Costa Rica, and that was a wonderful, wonderful blessing because we went on a trip that was multi-schools. Um, we had probably five, six, seven other schools that attended and worked with us. We worked side by side with them, building, painting, preaching, all kinds of things. The kids, their spiritual lives have grown, and they love serving the Lord. So this morning, as we go into worship with our, our choir and our band, with the Lord, we pray that all of you will be blessed, that your hearts will be changed, and his will will be done in his work. God bless. everyone. Um, my name is Lenny Spelcher. I'm 21 years old and I am a senior at Oklahoma City University studying instrumental music ed. Um, I thought I'd just say something. Uh, this is my first year at Parkview. Um, the kids have just been absolutely wonderful to work with and if you're a parent can you please stand and we'll go ahead and recognize you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. These kids are fantastic. Great, great stock. Okay. So uh, we're going to continue with the program, but i just like to say thank you to the parents for letting me teach your wonderful children.
the biggest little word. The 40 years of wandering in the wilderness were about to come to an end. Moses, because of his disobedience, was prohibited from crossing the Jordan into the Promised Land. Before transferring the leadership to Joshua, however, he wanted to admonish this new generation of Israelites regarding the two futures that awaited them. We can read about him, the full story, in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And as you read those words, you'll be struck by the fact that everything hinged on the biggest little word in the English language, if. If you obey, great blessings will follow, and the world will flock to your doorsteps, because they will sit up and take notice and wonder how they can receive the same benefits. If, however, you rebel and become disobedient, other nations will scorn and abuse you. Despite this important sermon, not only spoken but written down for posterity, the Israelites spent hundreds of years of ups and downs spiritually. And soon they became just like the other nations in so many ways. Following, following their exile in Babylon, some returned under Ezra and Nehemiah to rebuild the nation and entered a great period of zeal for the law. However, however, which by the time of Christ resulted in legalism. In some ways, we're not much different from them. Today, Christ calls us, the choice is ours if. Our designated offering this weekend is for Oklahoma 2% or onward Oklahoma 2%. And there are three areas that these funds uh, go to. Evangelism in Oklahoma, Seventh-day Adventist school, church schools in Oklahoma, such as Parkview and some others, and then we woke a woods operations. So if you are so inclined to give to this, now is your opportunity. For those taking up the offering, please rise for our prayer. Let us bow. Father in heaven, we are grateful for your presence, for your guidance in our lives, and we surrender our wills to you. We ask now your blessing on these funds. Multiply them to grow and enlarge and enrich your kingdom. We ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. As I said before, we were looking for stories for Parkview. We're also looking for history. 
<clears throat> there are a few years that we're unable to tie together. So if you have any history of Parkview Adventist Academy, please contact the school, write us, send your um, story, and we can tie everything together. Or come and visit. We love visitors. Our theme this year <clears throat> is based off of the graduation last year by Pastor Q or Quintana from uh, Salisaw. He had visited a museum of art and he went into this room and there were several paintings that were only partially finished and he couldn't figure that out. And his whole sermon ended up to be this quote. I serve a master designer that never walks away from a masterpiece. Those pieces of art that were only partially done were done by famous artists, Van Gogh and on. And so we serve a savior, a <clears throat> master designer, that will never stop until he is finished. If you'll turn in your Bibles to John 17, I think this helps it pull it all together. We're going to be reading the whole chapter because this is where Christ is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And our, our program this morning is uh, to do with that part in his life. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, He's in the Garden of Gethsemane on the rock. Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from evil. <clears throat> Excuse me. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. 
and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may, may, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. The, we serve a master designer who will not walk away with his masterpiece unfinished. You and I are his masterpieces. May his will be done. Since 
the blessed Messiah? Are you the chosen? Did some of you think you were going to get out of here without hearing one word from me? <laughs> I, was, I was asked to do uh, the closing prayer and give it a little appeal. Um, so I want to read 1 Timothy 4.12. 1 Timothy 4.12, it says, Let no one despise your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. So Parkview students, um, this verse is speaking to you. So if you didn't hear it the first time, let me read it one more time. Let no one despise your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. You know, a lot of the times we, we look at our kids and we say, that's the future of the church. But I think that you guys have just proven to us that you are not the future of the church. You are the present of our church. 
1 Corinthians 12, 5 says, there are different ministries, but the same Lord. What you guys are doing and what you guys just did up here is ministry. And I know a lot of the times we think of ministry and we think that's the pastor's job and he gets up and preach and that's what ministry is. But you guys just did ministry. You guys are practicing in ministry as you go to churches and you bless us with this, these sermons through song. And so I, I thank you guys and just continue to let God use you. Um, if you want to support Parkview, please, please support Parkview. There are a number of different ways that you can do that. Um, but specifically, if you want to support the Parkview music program, so that you can hear more music like this, so that they have the ability to travel around to other churches in Oklahoma and maybe in the future even outside of Oklahoma. Um, if, if you want that sort of ability for them, then please um, give to Parkview. And if you want to give to the music program, then specifically mark those checks to Parkview Music. If you want to give today, you can. You can just put cash or a check in the tithe envelope in front of you, but once again, make sure that you mark that envelope as Parkview Music, specifically, if you want it to go to the music program. And I also want to just give you a heads up as well that if you want to support Parkview with your, your time and maybe your skills working with your hands, uh, we are coming up in July on the, I believe it's the fourth annual, is it the fourth annual? Yeah, the fourth annual mission at Parkview, it will be July 28th and 29th, July 28th and 29th, and what that is, is it's a mission project at the school, and we've had great turnouts the past three years, and there are lots of just different jobs, some of them smaller jobs, some of them larger jobs, and so whether you are a mechanic or a painter or a plumber or you're just good at following directions or maybe you've got a strong back and you can lift heavy things, then we can use you. Um, please mark your calendars, July 28 and 29. That's going to be Mission at Parkview. And as we get closer, we will have a little more information on that and have a little advertisement. Um, Tasha, I know I haven't talked to you, but there will be a video uh, that we can show at the other churches. So I've, I've talked to you, Parkview, and, and um, read a couple verses that I hope give you some encouragement moving forward. But now I would like to just, in closing, say a few things to the adults here. Matthew 19, 14. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. You know, these, these kids that just put on this entire church service. I, I was blessed, and um, I believe that many of you were blessed as well. But sometimes we as adults, you know, we think we have all the answers, we think we know everything, we, we think we know how ministry is done, and sometimes we can get in the way. And this is nothing new. It was happening when Jesus was walking this earth. But he said, let the children come to me, don't hinder them. You know, our job as, as adults is really first and foremost to love these kids and to connect them to Jesus. Build them up. Pray for them and pray with them. Listen to them. If they have questions, answer their questions. Love instead of condemn. Train instead of punish. Support instead of oppose. The Adventist church is right here in front of you. And the only question I have for you is, will you halt its progress or will you push it forward? The Adventist church is sitting right here. Let's pray. Our loving, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this amazing time that we have had with you and with Parkview Adventist Academy. I ask that you would just continue to bless the school, that you would continue to bless all of the teachers that are there and everybody that volunteers, but especially bless the kids as they continue to further their education, but also come to know you better and build friendships with each other that can last a lifetime. And I also ask that you would continue 
you to bless the households, bless their parents, their grandparents, any of their family that is involved in their life and supporting them. And Lord, we once again just thank you for this opportunity to come together on Sabbath and to worship and praise your name. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And now as we go back into the fellowship hall, we ask that you would bless the food and that you would bless the hands that prepared it, help it to nourish and strengthen our bodies. And we ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.